Hi, this is Jeremiah Israel, and this is the Bible study, and I want to talk about Christmas. That's right, Christmas. Now, it's a holiday coming up here, and we're talking about Christmas. Most celebrated holiday in the world, Christmas. So uh, Everybody loves it, everybody cares, everybody and all that stuff like that. They love Christmas. Get presents, everybody loves them. They just sit around the tree. Uh, by a fire and all that shit like that. Well, Christmas came from, it came from the Garden. That's right, the Garden of Eden. The tree represents the Garden, I mean, the, the tree that Eve, that Eve, <laughs> uh, 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 took the fruit of, of good and evil and gave it to Adam. The tree represents the the tree of good and evil. The the bows, the red bows that are hanging on the tree represents the fruit. That's why I deck with gold and silver and so forth and so on. You go to second John verse chapter one, verse six and seven, and it says, And this is the love that we walk after, his commandments. This is the commandment that as ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and the Antichrist. Now I know I spent a long time with Jewish people and they do not believe that Jesus Christ has came yet. They do not believe that Jesus Christ has came on the earth yet, that he's coming already. And then I'm going to repeat it again. And this is the love that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment that as ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Okay? As simple as that. You go to Genesis. Uh, the Jews mostly run this whole world. And and um, whoever runs it set the rules, right? Christmas is one, one, of, one, one of the one holidays that everybody celebrates. It's a circular holiday. I mean, everybody can celebrate it. And as simple as that. Okay. Genesis. Chapter 2. Fifteen through seventeen. And the Lord and the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden and, and to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of, the, of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in that day thou eateth thereof thou shalt surely die. Right? And this is what, what the Christmas tree represents. This whole week, the whole week, it's, Christmas is not one day, it's a whole week, alright, and um, then New Year's come. They sit around this tree, bring it in the house, a tree, which don't make no damn sense, because a tree don't belong in the house. It don't belong in the house. It's abnormal. It's against common sense to bring a tree in the house. And you cutting down a living thing. Okay? And that's simple as that. That is a living thing you putting in your house and cutting down. I seen a preview or, or a documentary where they say they could collect gigawatts of electricity from a tree to light a lamp. This is facts. Anything with energy like that has to be alive. So, uh, 
Genesis 2 and 15. And the Lord God took man and put him in the garden on the east of the east of Eden and dressed it and kept it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For on the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now, we celebrate the taking of the fruit against God's, against God's rules of not taking of the fruit of that tree, that forbidden fruit. And we are living in a, in a nation, in a world where this whole nation, this whole world is a forbidden fruit in the Most High's eyes. The tree represents the tree that was in the Garden of Eden. Pure evil. Pure evil. And Eve was deceived by the devil. Whoever the devil was in the garden was a man. And he was a, a, a precursor of the creation of Adam and Eve because because Adam and Eve was was um basically a scientific uh creation. That's like any scientist, you got trial and error. You make one being trying to make him perfect, and he makes him, and he make him perfect, and he calls him out of the garden, and so forth and so on, and continues and continues. It was a painstaking um, process to make man. And when man finally got became Adam and Eve, and he finally found he made he finally uh, created man Adam, and then created Eve. One of these progenitors or former creations that was not good enough in God's eyes, who was cast out of the garden, came back and deceived Eve of eating of the fruit. You gotta ask yourself, how did the devil or whoever this being was know about the test? Because they went through it already. And they got cast out. And they didn't want Adam or Eve to be accepted by the Most High, so they deceived him. And what happened to Adam and Eve? That's right. They got cast out. You ask yourself, why did God put a flaming uh, uh, cherubim, which is an angel, on, or a cherubim, which is an angel, on, in, uh, on side the borders of the garden? Because whatever was out there, it was, God put it there, so he could guard the garden because the tree of life was in the tree the tree of life was in there and the tree of good and evil was in there so if you I mean, they talk about the tree of good and evil they don't talk about tree of life so anybody could go in there take of the tree of life which will make you live forever that's why it was guarded and a tree of good and knowledge, that's why it was guarded. And why would you put a guard outside the garden if there was nothing to guard or there was nothing to prevent or, or there was nothing outside of the garden that could violate the garden? It had to be people outside the garden. And Adam and Eve and God put a cherubim outside the borders of the garden. Okay? Alright. So the tree, the Christmas tree is a representation of I mean the Christmas tree is a representation of the tree of good and evil. And it's celebrated every year on uh, on, on, on December 25th. As simple as that. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 and 7. Now, the serpent was more susceptible than any beast of the field and the Lord God and that has made. Like I said, this being was a progenitor, a, a, a being that was created before Adam and Eve. 
that was cast out of the garden to be not good enough in God's eyes. That's why he called it the beast. All right? Anything that is not created in the image and likeness of God to God is, con is, is considered a beast. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God has made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said ye shall not eat of the tree of the garden? How did this being know about the test? Because that's exactly where it was. If Adam and Eve was in the garden with the tree of knowledge and tree of life, and there was no guards around the tree of knowledge or the tree of life, then it had to be a test. Verse 2, And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of, the, of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God knows that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So the devil, whoever this being was, and was a being, put a monkey wrench in God's work. Okay? And when the woman saw that the tree was good for, for food, and that it was pleasant to the eye, this is what women do today. Everything pleasant to the eye is what she attracted to. She attracted diamonds, she attracted cars, she attracted to coats, furs, she attracted everything worldly. This woman is worldly, and she has not changed since the beginning of time. And God is professes throughout the Bible not to be worldly of this world. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eye and a tree to, to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat. And gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves an apron. Human beings were supposed to do whatever God said. By them having their eyes open was a transgression against the Most High's wishes. And that's simple as that. First John, we go back to First John, or oh, Second John, First John. All right, hold up, hold up. First John. First John two fifteen. All right. This is why God ordained men lead. Because she took up the fruit, she stole the press in the eyes, and she ate of the fruit and also gave to her husband while him knowing. Okay, I'm going to read it. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, 
the love of the Father is not in him. Powerful, right? Powerful. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the bride of the life is not of the Father, but is of the world. I don't mean to stay away from the fruit. I'm still away from the fruit. Eve was all by herself in the garden one time, and that being came unto Eve, which was not a snake. It was a being. I mean, who would listen to a snake? <laughs> being and taught her into taking of the fruit and also giving it to her husband. Love, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in, for all that, for the, all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of our, pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. I'm going to look up, uh, uh, back in the day, Christmas came from Santa Nelia. And I'm going to Wikipedia it real quick. Santa Nelia. Santa Nelia. Santa Nelia. Santa Nelia. Santa Nelia. Let's Wikipedia it for a little while. Hold up. All right, Centinella was an ancient Rome festival in honor of a deity Saturn originally held held on December seventeenth. Later expanded with festivals through December twenty third. The whole the holiday was celebrated with sacrifices at the temple of Saturn in the Roman form in a public banquet, followed by private gifts, givings, continuing partying, and carnival atmosphere that overturned Roman social norms. Gambling was permitted. Masters provided table service for their slaves. The poet Cutulus called it the best, the best of days. In Roman mythology, Saturn was an agricultural deity who reigned over the world in the golden age when humans enjoyed the spontaneous bounty of the earth without labor in a state of social agriculturalism. The revelatories of Saturnalia were supposed to reflect the conditions of a lost mythical age, not of them desirable none of them desirable the Greek equivalent was the chronoia although probably the best known Roman holiday Sanelli was a whole it was a whole is not described from being to end in any single ancient source so basically Saturnalia is a progenitor or descendant of Christmas. Saturnalia is a planet. Saturnalia is devil. Devilism. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Celebrate with sacrifices at the Temple of Saturn in the Roman form and full banquets following provided gifting. This is a Greek holiday. It has nothing to do with Jesus Christ because Jesus never went to Greece. All right. I'm going to look up another one called So Invictus. 
So Invicta, so Invicta, so Invictus, so Invictus. So Invictus. So Invictus was an official sun god of the later Roman Empire and 274 Roman Empire Aurelian had it an official cult uh, alongside the traditional Roman cults. Scholars disagree whether the new deity was a refoundation of the ancient Latin cult Sol and the revival of the cult of Alacapolis or complete new. The god was favored by emperors after Aurelian and appeared on their coins unto Constantine. The last inscription referring to Sol Invictus date to 387 AD and there were enough devotees in the 5th century that Augustine found it was necessary to preach against them. It is commonly claimed that the date of December 5th for Christmas was selected in order to correspond with Roman festivals of Deity Nullus Solus Invicti or birth of Sol Invictus but Pope Benedict the, the Pope has argued that December 5th the our Pope, the Pope now has argued that December 5th date was determined simply by calculating nine months after March 25th regarding as the day of Jesus conception the festival of Enoch. This claim was mainly based on passage of the commentary on the prophet Daniel by Helopos of Rome, which was written about written around year two thousand I mean two hundred and four. However, even Pope Benedict has stated that Christmas acquires its definitive form in the fourth century when it replaced Rome's festival of Sol Invictus. So Invictus is sun worship. So Invictus is sun worship so is Christmas and so that's why they think Jesus was born on October 25th. This Pope looks pure evil. The Pope we have today, he looks pure evil. Demonic even. Okay, Deuteronomy 16 and 21. Excuse the mispronouncing of the words, some of them. Uh, they are Greek. You remind me. Right, sixteen. Excuse me. Sixteen. Sixteen twenty one. Thou shalt not plant thee a grove of any tree near unto the altar of the Lord thy God, which thou shalt make thee. And the Christmas tree, that's, a, that's what God said. You're not supposed to do these things. God said it. I didn't say it. God said it. Okay? What, what do grove mean in Hebrew? Okay?
Translation around Ishara, the image of the goddess, Second Kings 23 and 6, where his nonsense, nonsense Joe brought out the grove after the house of the Lord. Alright, alright. Sorry about this presentation. But basically, it's some worship. Exodus. Exodus. 34. Go to another situation on Christmas. 34 and 13. But ye shall destroy the... This is what God's talking about. Everything that you are seeing nowadays that don't make... Don't line themselves to the Most High. This is what you should do to their, their, their thing they got going here with the Christmases and all that stuff like that and the trees. And God told you not to put no tree. Don't cut down the tree. Whatever, whatever. And you do it anyway. But ye shall destroy their altars and break their images and cut down their groves. This is what God was talking about. Deuteronomy 12. And three. And ye shall overthrow their altars and break down their pillars and burn their groves of fire. And ye shall hew down the graven images of their gods and destroy the name of them out of that place. The Christmas tree is, in fact, a god. Is in fact a god, an image of a god, and as simple as that. That's exactly what it is. That's exactly what you got in your houses, and y'all gotta do something about it. That's all I got to say. This is Jeremiah Israel. And this is the Bible study. A little, all right, could be better, but follow my next ones.